Hello and welcome back. If you clicked on this video, we are of the same vibration, which means that you're part of the Diamond Light Matrix. And I finally got the download on how it will be activated in this group. So if you're interested to learn how, keep on watching. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is a very special day because today I finally got the download on what the Diamond Light Matrix is and how we are all a part of it and what the next step of the activation is. As you guys, if you've been on this journey with me, you know that I started seeing this matrix back in October on the new moon in 2020. And it's been a journey and I know from my meditations as I can see it everywhere. It just depends on where I am in my vibration in that moment. So the closer that I am to self and the higher my vibration, it comes out and it's just uh, like a three-dimensional matrix that's all around me. And I knew right from the beginning that the spheres in the matrix represented you all, the people that are vibrating to my frequency and my vibration, because when I tuned into each sphere, it felt like a different energy, a different person, a different being. And I didn't know what, after that, I didn't know anything. I didn't know, well, first of all, I didn't even know it was called the Diamond Light Matrix, but it was um, through an Akashic Records reading that I had from someone else um, named Kat Fowler that she saw it and she said, oh yes, that's the Diamond Light Matrix. and. Some people will be able to see it, some won't, and there's no judgment on that. But what is important is that each one of us are a part of it. And this whole time I have been, you know, when I go into meditation, I ask about it. Even when I did ayahuasca, I tried to bring it in and find out about it, but they didn't want to talk about it. So like in what the, it's weird, but the feeling that I get when I do ask is that it wasn't time. It wasn't ready. Yes, I can see it. Yes, it is part of something that's coming, but th th it wasn't ready to be activated. So this week, the way the week started is that Richard told me kind of last minute that he wanted to go camping. And he told me like, I had like a day notice. And so I was like, well, I have to come up with something to talk about for next week's podcast before we can go. And... So I decided based on last week, okay, well, I'm going to try this week and just go into the records and see what they want to talk about, what they want me to talk about, instead of me waiting for something to come up in my week and then, you know, me spending time with it. Basically, I didn't have time. So I was like, I'm going to try something different this week. So I went into the records like on Friday, and this is the message that I got for the week. It was light and its reflection into the world and how it dances within all in different ways. Shadows and lights represents the, represent the peaks and the valleys in everyone's journey, and all are exactly as they should be. We are all and all is us. The hope of this time is to choose the things that light you up instead of making you feel dense and heavy. The lighter your vessel, the easier the transcendence into love. Release what is holding you back or what is done. This is a message to show you what no longer is resonating with your being in this time and space. Okay, so that was the message. And as you can see, it's very... <laughs> what did that mean? Um, so I, I felt like, okay, I can understand what it means words, but what does it mean? Like I, I had to wrap my head around it. Right. And it, it ended up that Richard wanted to decided to go on a motorcycle trip the next day instead of us going camping together, which in my body, in my mind, I was relieved because I knew that I wasn't ready to record that message. I didn't understand it, essentially. I mean, I understood what it's saying, but what is, how does that relate, right? Like, what does that mean? And then, um, so he left on Monday, and that day um, I got a, a session request for a healing, and the healing was for Tuesday. So in that healing, <laughs> 
Um, it was for one of you beautiful souls. Um, I was helping the person obviously get connected back to themselves. And, and as you guys know, when I'm in a session, it's, it's not really, well, I open my record, so it can be my guides bringing through messages, but it's also connecting with their guides. And so typically it's very focused on what they need in order to heal what is ailing them or bothering them. And for her, it was that she was just kind of feeling out of sorts, like being angry, frustrated, and feeling not connected. And pretty much right away, the energy that came through was that she has to ground the energy that's in her body. And like when, when my mind heard that, I was like, okay, do you go outside, walk barefoot? You know, the things that I've talked about in the past on this uh, podcast is grounding. And grounding is so important because we have to transmit the energies that are coming from above us to the earth in order for our bodies to be able to handle them. And that's what grounding is about. And whenever we are feeling that disconnected, it's because we haven't grounded ourselves into the uh, here and now, into time and space now. And that's the episode last week was a lot about that, right? Like I was feeling after ayahuasca, so up here and not able to pull it down into my body. And that's what the last three weeks or a month have been about really grounding all the things that I experienced through ayahuasca. So I was explaining to her, you know, the different techniques that I know um, logically or that I've learned through healers. And, and then all of a sudden the download came. She needed to bury a crystal in her yard and bury it and put a, like a blanket or a mat over it and literally sit on it and meditate from that space sitting on top of the crystal because the crystal would amplify the energies that were going through her into the ground through mother earth and back up through her body and as i'm saying it i'm like wow that, that makes sense <laughs> you know like my personality is still in these sessions it's just I try and before I open the space, I obviously say like, I don't want Gabrielle to control this session, but I, she's there. So, you know, she's also like thinking like, wow, that's a cool idea. So, um, she, and, and the, the client was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And I was like, it totally does make sense. And, and so then, um, you know, we finished the session and that was amazing. And I just want to say, you know, I don't advertise about doing sessions because I believe that when you're ready, I'm ready and it's all energy, right? And it, I will be here to support you. And I just want to leave that invitation open, but I'm not somebody that's going to be like, uh, you know, come for a session because I'm not doing the work. I'm, I'm illuminating what needs to be done through your vessel. And you guys are here to do the work. You're, we each are here to do our own work. I can't do it for you. So that's why energy work really has, you have to be ready for it. So then last night I was like really thinking about this and thinking like, God, that was such a good download. And, <laughs> and so I emailed her and she had emailed me to say thank you and stuff. And I emailed her back and I'm like, I have to share this on the podcast. So today I went into my records to ask about this uh, technique of, you know, burying a crystal and sitting on it. And, um, I was amazed by what came through that, um, the first thing I did was I had to tell someone. <laughs> so I called my mom and like shared, I was like, oh my God, I finally know what the diamond light matrix is. So what I got from the records is that the, yes, burying the crystal in the yard and meditating on top of it is definitely an amplifier of energy. So what they said was that crystals are a magnifier and cleaner of transmitted energy, and they can help to cleanse the body and mind so that the energies can come into the earth and can be brought back through the body and transmuted and alkalized the vessel to the updated and um, clarified energy systems that are now in this atmosphere. So as I, I I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then they said, this is part of the new ley, ley line activation. 
and they, meaning you guys, are the spheres of light in the matrix, which I knew you were the spheres, but I didn't know how it was supposed to be connected. But now I know that what we're supposed to do is be bearing these crystals and I'm going to get into, like, if you live in the city, I asked all the questions. So, because I personally have a backyard, but it's all um, rocks and decking. So I don't have a place to bury anything. So essentially, if you have a yard, go find a spot, bury a crystal. And I asked, what what's the best crystal? And they said, that doesn't matter. What's important is what you have. So... Then the message came through that the best three are clear quartz, rose quartz, or amethyst. And um, the client that I worked with yesterday, she asked if it's a point, does the point, should it go be angled down? Should the point be angled down towards the core of the earth or, or sitting up towards the, towards the, you know, surface of the earth? And they said down, the, the point should be going down towards the core of the earth. But if it's a raw crystal, that's fine too. The point is that each crystal amplifies energy, right? So it doesn't have to be anything specific. I don't want you guys to go out and purchase one. I want you to use what you have and find a spot, dig a hole, bury it, cover it up, and that will be your space for meditation. I wanted to show you guys some examples of crystals that I'm referring to. So here is a Lumerian quartz. And as you can see, there's horizontal lines. Let's see if I can get it. That are the record keepers of the Mu civilization. And that's the one that can go underneath the chair. I think they chose this one, there it is, um, for the chair because it's super amplified. So if you use this in your in the ground, I think it will up the ante. <laughs> and then here is a um, amethyst. And again, you would have it angled down going into the earth so that it is more concentrated and direct. And then I also have this rose quartz that actually is double terminated. So you could have one going down and one going up into your root chakra, which if you have it, this is a great option. And then obviously we can also use just clear quartz and this is just a rough, clear, unpolished quartz. Um, so I don't want you guys to get caught up in the perfect one. And ultimately what I think we're going to be doing is putting them multiple places. Now, what they say we're supposed to do then is that um, we're supposed to sit on the crystal. Imagine clear white light coming down through your crown chakra, through all of your um, energy centers, and then out of the root of your root chakra. And as it leaves your root chakra, it goes through that crystal en energy, and it, it feels like it goes like um, from that point of, of straight line energy, when it hits the crystal, it almost like it fractals out like, a, like the roots of a tree. And as it goes down into the ground, those roots that are now, instead of being one beam of light, it now is like literally roots going down into the earth. And as you, your mind, you want to follow that, that energy pattern down through the core, down to the core of the earth. And as it wraps around the core of the earth, Imagine it then coming back and pulling back up, back through all of the layers of the earth. And again, imagine imagine all of the roots coming back, back, back up through the, the core of the earth, up through the different minerals. And as it again passes through that crystal, it then goes up back through your root chakra and through all of your energy centers to your heart. And from there, it radiates outward, from your heart chakra out. So once you've done that practice of pulling it in all the way through your body, then down into the earth, through the crystal, down into the earth, wrapping around the core, then coming back through the earth, through the crystal, back up through your energy centers, to your heart chakra, out through your heart chakra, that is the space. And what happens then is that each one of you are part of the ley line. So I have been thinking that 
this so physically that the the new ley lines were going to be like like a physical point right and what they said is that no in the new earth or the new dimension that we're going to the ley lines will be connected to people because we our souls are portals in themselves so as long as we connect with the earth and bringing that energy back through that crystal into our body so that it's the purest brightest cleanest energy and then radiating out from the heart chakra you become a beacon and therefore become a piece or a part of the ley line so essentially all of us are that right so we are creating a new matrix of ley lines and so no matter where you are in the world you are that light that line for your I mean, country, community, I mean, you can go as wide as you want or as small as you want, but it, you are that point. And through the grid that I see, each point, it creates the matrix. And all of us are those beacons that if connected to your soul, your, and again, this is done through meditation, right? through connecting with your soul and then imagining that light radiating outward, you become that beacon and that sphere of these new energies that we're bringing in. And so I, I, like I said, I've known that the spheres were the ley lines. I just didn't know how to bring it down into a reality. And this is it. This is literally it. So I even thought like, okay, tomorrow I'm literally bringing a shovel to the cliffs and I am going to dig a little hole. And it doesn't, the other thing is the crystal doesn't have to be huge. It can be whatever you have. Don't overthink the crystal. The point is the location and where you sit on top of it. So tomorrow I'm going to go to the cliffs and dig a little hole and put crystals where I sit all the time, right? I've always been creating earth altars with crystals outside of where I sit instead of connecting it through my body. Now, I brought up, okay, well, what if you live in an apartment? What if you don't have a yard? And so the first thing is, if you have a space in nature that you do naturally go to, like I go to the cliffs, that is your first point. That is where you will be bringing a little shovel and digging a hole, and that's where you will sit and meditate. But if you don't have that, they said, the next best thing is a pot of dirt, like a plant in your house, that you can plant the, the crystal in the plant. The point is that, the crystal needs to amplify natural uh, energy. So it's if it's in a pot, it's amplifying the natural soil that's in that pot into the atmosphere and you can pull it from there into your heart. But the vision that I get is that the, the clearer the connection to the root chakra, the brighter the light is because the clearer the connection is. So then I said, well, what about <laughs> if you're sitting your desk chair? Because I'm always sitting at my desk. Can I put a crystal underneath my chair that connects with my root chakra and can go down energetically into the ground? And they said, yes, because think about how often we're sitting in a desk chair. So I then said, what, what crystal is best for this? And they said, Lemurian quartz. Now, if you have one, amazing. If you don't, clear quartz is fine. It's just the bigger amplifier. I think the reason they brought up Lemurian quartz is that they hold the, the seeding or the history of the Mu civilization, which I think I've definitely talked about being connected to. Um, there's record keepers on those crystals and there's something about pulling the energy from the earth that is going through those record keepers that helps to activate the energy in a, in a clearer way. So um, that's an option, but I want you guys to be creative. <laughs> like I'm thinking even in my meditation cushion, it's made out of some kind of beads. I'm going to put a crystal in there because that's what I sit on when I give sessions really think about every place that you sit intentionally that is where you want to have that crystal energy between your root chakra and the ground and in your meditation pulling it through the, the crown down to the root through the crystal remember and then once it hits that crystal it becomes these roots that um fractal out wrapping all the way into the earth and then pulling that back through your body into your heart and out and what this is literally is purified energy. So 
the energies that are coming in through the, um, that we are able to see through the Schumann resonance are very intense. And a lot of people get like different symptoms, uh, like they can't sleep, nausea, headaches, all of these things. What the download was is that it's not, it's, um, it's clarified energy that our bodies aren't ready to uh, handle yet. So doing this process, they say alchemizes the body to accept the new energies that are coming in. And I have felt this before at the cliffs where when I, when we've had intense days of um, the Schumann resonance really spiking, I can actually feel it coming in. And, and the thing is, is we can fight it or we can accept it. And what this is by accepting it, you feel so deeply anchored into the earth. This is just giving it the extra oomph and then you're being intentional about radiating it out for everyone. So <laughs> I know it's a lot. I'm so, so excited that this happened today. And I'm just, I, I feel like it's been such a journey to get to this point. But I know now that it wasn't time. You know, I know that I was supposed to see the grid and to understand that something was coming that was going to connect us all. But now to actually know the steps to take for each of us to do something that we actually can do, right? And what they also say is that this is really going to help with your meditation practice because you're getting clear energy. It's not fracted energy coming in from outside sources. It's a clear line into the ground, back up through your body and out from your heart. And therefore it's more uh, purified. There is no distortion. And like I said, this is supposed to help you guys get deeper into your, your own journeys, your own souls, and also being the beacon that you're here to be. Because what I've been told is that if you're vibrating with my energy, you are part of that diamond light matrix. And you little, you are a sphere in the matrix. And you are here to amplify Earth's energy through your vessel and out. So I, they said this is just the beginning, but I was so excited to share it with you guys. And I, uh, I don't know where we go from here. I think what's going to happen and I'm excited to see is does it grow the matrix? Does it make the matrix more powerful? But um, we will see. We will see. And I'm excited to report back on what happens visually as this goes on. But if you have a place in nature, bring a crystal, sit down and enjoy that energy because it's for you. It is for all of us to enjoy those energies that are coming into the earth right now and to amplify it. Okay. So I hope you have a great week and I'm excited to tell you and let you know what happens from here. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe below if you want to be on this journey of the diamond light matrix and how we will be amplifying this energy as we move through these processes. And I'm excited to do it with you.